you say, of course, uh, in a press release and in a long document as well uh, that details that the, the current offer meaningfully undervalues HP. Enrique, is there a value that you and the rest of the board conceivably would accept for your company's shares? Actually, David, what we are saying is that there are three reasons why we think the offer doesn't make sense for HP shareholders. First, undervalues the company. Second, creates a very risky capital structure. And third, the synergies that, that are used, we believe are unrealistic. Why do you believe those synergies are unrealistic? And have you had a real opportunity to examine what their numbers are, which are far higher, of course, than what you said? They publicly come out with $2 billion. Carl Icahn saying as much as $3.5 billion at one point. You come closer to maybe a billion dollars. Let me explain kind of the overlap between the two companies, which clearly will help to understand that. HP is a $60 billion company. Of those 60 billion, 40 billion are PCs that don't have any overlap with Xerox. Of the rest of the print business, a big part of it is consumer, printers that you will be buying for home, that don't have any overlap with Xerox. So when we look at the real overlap, we are talking about 2.8 billion from our side, 9 billion from their side. So we're talking about $12 billion to look synergies for. $1 billion, we believe, is an aggressive and realistic number. What they are including in, this, in their numbers are cost savings that we are driving as a standalone company that only HP shareholders should be, get benefit from. Right. So your point being you can also achieve those cost savings. You are obviously, as we know, instituting a large share buyback over the next few years that will in, potentially include buying back as much as 50 percent of the company. But why is that a better route to go than engaging with these guys and seeing, in fact, whether or not there's a deal that could be done that does make sense for both companies? Actually, what we are saying is that our number one priority is to execute the plan that we shared last week, a plan where we are going to be growing profit, a plan that where we are going to be reducing the cost structure of the company, we are going to be expanding EPS, and also using our balance sheet in benefit for HP shareholders. We have also said that we are open to a potential transaction in addition to executing our plan, and that the combination of both will be the best answer for HP shareholders. A combination of both what would be the best answer for shareholders? I'm sorry. Both the execution of our standalone plan and, in addition, looking for a potential combination of the two companies. Okay. So on that, you do indicate today that you spoke to Mr. Vizentine, I think, on Tuesday. You've set up a potential meeting next week. What is it you're going to be asking them that you haven't asked before that might be a different answer that might encourage you to say, okay, this is something we want to engage in? Actually, what we need to do, and we need to address the three problems that we explained today. We need to agree on what are the right valuation of the two companies. We need to make sure that the merged entity will have the right capital structure and that the synergies are realistic. And the, we really need to agree on the three terms before we discuss what will be the best way of putting the two companies together. Right. Well, many of your shareholders might think the best way would actually be for HP to buy Xerox. You take on a lot less leverage. You would potentially at least benefit from the combined synergies of the companies in a fairly difficult, potentially economic environment. Why isn't that something that you once were willing to pursue that you perhaps are no longer willing to pursue? Actually, what we have said is we are open to the combination. How the combination is done is not the key topic that we should address. It is really important to agree on the three terms and then how it is done. It will be a natural discussion after all this is clarified. How important would it be if those discussions got somewhere that you be the person to run the combined company? Is that something that you have to have to have in order to engage in discussions? Actually, my key priority is to create value for shareholders and execute the plan that we shared last week. But let me share the credentials that I have. I understand and I have been in the company for a long time. I have run the most complex businesses in the company. I run the commercial PC business when it was declining and get it to, got it to grow. I drove the separation of the company, creating what today is HP Inc. I have managed the print business and take it from double-digit decline to stabilize it last year. And I work with the board to define what is our long-term plan, the plan that we presented last October that drives a significant restructuring, a significant reduction of our structural cost. So then what is it that Carl Icahn, one of your largest shareholders, doesn't understand when he says it's of paramount importance and he wants the two companies together, that John Vizentine and his team are the surviving management of the combined company? Well, what I can tell you is I 
very confident in the future of the company. I'm excited about driving HP. And I told the team, I'm absolutely committed to drive all the necessary changes to get the company and to deliver the goals that we have declared. But Icon's got a big voice. He makes a lot of noise. He keeps saying, no, not you, the other guy, if, in fact, you even were to get there. Actually, the only thing I can say is Carl has this opinion. We are going to make this company successful. We are going to be delivering the value that we share. Do you really week. think you can drive growth initiatives, Enrique? I mean, it is a growth challenge company, and Xerox is certainly a growth challenge company. It hasn't grown in quite some time. What gives you the confidence that you can actually put up, let's call it, true organic revenue growth? What we have said is that in the next three years, our goal is to grow EPS by growing profit, by using our capital structure in a more effective way. And three years from now, the company will be in a much stronger position than it is today. We'll have a higher percentage of growing businesses. The number of businesses and their contract and their services will be bigger. And also from a cost perspective, it will be a leaner company. So we are going to be delivering very aggressive growth from an EPS perspective, while at the same time, Position in the company for the future. Right, okay, but that wasn't revenue growth you just said. And that what, was EPS growth. And what we have said is that during the next three years, our expectation is that revenue will be flattish because we have built a very realistic plan. If we see opportunities to drive revenue growth, as we have done during the last three years, we will continue to do that. But those very, uh, those very conditions sometimes do bring companies together that at least have overlap in certain industries because the ability is there to cut even more cost. You seem unconvinced, however, that will be the case with Xerox. No, we have said that we are open to consolidation. We think consolidation can drive, create value. We started consolidation three years ago when we bought the Samsung printing business. It was a losing money business. During that first year, we transformed it into a, an accretive business for HP. We are open to consolidation, but needs to be done in the right terms.